Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Johnson. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 8th of October. External forces will not be allowed to violate our territory, assures Indian Air Force Chief on 89th Foundation Day. Pakistan is continued to suffer due to rising inflation amid pandemic. And Kabul residents hope for improvement in international relations and lower prices of goods. And now for all the details. The Indian Air Force on Friday celebrated its 89th Foundation Day at the Hindon Air Base in northern Ghaziabad city in presence of the Chief of Air Staff and senior officials of the three armed forces. On the occasion, newly appointed Chief V. R. Chaudhary said that these are crucial times with regards to security scenario and external forces will not be allowed to violate our territory. The Indian Air Force on Friday celebrated its 89th Foundation Day at the Hindon Air Force Station in northern Uttar Pradesh state's Ghaziabad in the presence of newly appointed Chief, Air Chief Marshal V. R. Chaudhary and senior officials of the three armed forces. The ceremony began with flypass showcasing heritage aircraft, modern transport and frontline fighter aircraft. Air Force personnel marched past as helicopters performed a marvelous air display. In an address to the air warriors on the occasion, Air Chief Marshal V. R. Chaudhary assured the nation that his force is well equipped and prepared to thwart any external threat which threatens India's sovereignty. We must demonstrate to the nation that external forces will not be allowed to violate our territory. I pledge to do all I can to provide you with clear directions, good leadership and the best of resources that I can muster. He also stressed that the prompt actions in response to developments in eastern Ladakh sector along the Chinese border were a testament to Air Force's combat readiness. In June last year, tensions erupted into a frontier clash in which 20 Indian soldiers were killed and China suffered an unspecified number of casualties. The Indian Air Force dramatically increased its presence near the Chinese border area, sensitive to skirmishes last year. It has been providing mainly logistical support in the region to the Indian Army. Angry and concerned regional minorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Friday hit the streets and demanded justice as they took part in funeral processions of two teachers killed by terrorists the latest in a spate of targeted killings in the Union territory. Scores of people from India's Jammu and Kashmir's minority Hindu and Sikh communities on Friday hit the streets in the Union territory during the last rites procession of two teachers killed by terrorists on Thursday, the latest in a spate of targeted killings in the region. Anti-Pakistan slogans and calls for justice were raised in Srinagar and Jammu cities during the funeral processions of Supinder Kaur, a school principal, and teacher Deepak Chand, who were shot dead by terrorists inside a school. According to police, the resistance force, a group affiliated to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror outfit, was behind the recent attacks. ये हम कभी भी बर्दाश्त नहीं करें हम इनको बिल्ली की टोंक से मरवाएंगे ऐसी बात नहीं है हम ये कभी भी बर्दाश्त नहीं करें चाहे वो सिख हो मुस्लिम हो बौद्ध हो किसी को भी कत्ल किया जाए कोई भी धर्म इजाजत नहीं देता है किसी चीज को कत्ल करना ये सबसे बड़ा गुनाह है सबसे मकरना पॉलिसी है India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party members and their supporters on Friday also blamed Pakistan for the recent attacks and blamed these attempts to fuel militancy and disturb peace in the Kashmir Valley in all, 28 civilians, including political workers, have been killed in targeted assassinations this year, according to police records. Villagers in Harnai, a town in Pakistan's southern Balochistan province, assess damaged and cleared out debris after an earthquake of magnitude 5.7 hit the region early on Thursday. Residents have expressed fears about the living conditions in the aftermath of the natural calamity as their houses have been heavily damaged. Villagers in Harnai, a town in Pakistan's southern Balochistan province, were seen clearing out debris after an earthquake of magnitude 5.7 hit the region in the early hours of Thursday. 
The quake, which struck when many victims were asleep, killed at least 22 people, most of them women and children, and injured about 300, authorities said. Many houses were left shattered and residents had to store their belongings outside. A resident expressed fears about the living conditions they will have to face after the earthquake. He said almost everyone would have to spend the night outside as the houses were left heavily damaged. اب وہ اتنا خوف ہو رہا سے اب رات ہے تقریباً ہم نے سب نے سارے مالے نے بلکہ پورے یہ شہر نے باہر رات گزارنی ہے اس کنڈیشن میں گھر اور مکان کمرے نہیں ہے کہ ہم اندر رات کو رہ لیں اپنے کمروں کے اندر یا برامدوں میں سارے ڈیمیج ہو گئے The power supply to the district has been heavily disrupted. Aftershocks were reportedly being felt across the region. Balochistan Chief Minister Jam Kamal Khan said that relief efforts were underway. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan earlier on Thursday offered condolences to families and had ordered an immediate emergency assistance to those affected. Moving on. Rising inflation has continued to raise worries of locals across Pakistan who say life has become miserable and difficult. The frequent price hike of essential commodities and fuel have been hitting hard particularly the poor, struggling with the economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. Locals in Pakistan's financial capital of Karachi have continued to express anguish over the frequent hike in prices of essential commodities and fuel in recent months in the country. Pakistan's annual consumer price inflation rate rose to 9.0% from 8.4% in September, according to the country's statistics bureau. The price rises have been heating hard the country's poor, who are also struggling with the economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. आटा चीनी सब बढ़ेगा यानी कि गरीब की मौत आएगी और कुछ नहीं होगा अमीर का पैसा और बढ़ेगा और इसी पे किसी पार्टी का रद्दमल अभी तक नहीं आया सबको अपने मुफाद में लगे हुए हैं गरीब को किसी को फिकर नहीं है और गरीब करे तो क्या करे एक दिन खाएगा दूसरे दिन फिर सोचेगा मेरी उम्र इतनी उधर गया मैंने अपने हर दौर में ये देखा है कि महंगाई आती आती है हर कोई लेके आता है आप बैठते हैं कि महंगाई खत्म करेंगे और जब आ जाते हैं तो उससे ज्यादा महंगाई होती है हर Meanwhile, in the latest, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, during ongoing virtual talks over its program, has asked Pakistan to impose additional income and sales taxes to pull up the annual tax collection target from Rs 5.8 trillion to Rs 6.3 trillion, reports suggest. The move is likely to further affect domestic budgets of people. In news from Afghanistan, Residents of Afghan capital Kabul facing soaring prices of goods are concerned about more possible economic and social problems. They hope that the Islamic Emirate that took over Afghanistan, a country already suffering from drought and the COVID-19 pandemic, will improve its relations with neighboring countries and lower prices of goods. Poverty and hunger have worsened since the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, a country already suffering from drought and the COVID-19 pandemic. Afghan residents continue to face soaring prices of goods, a Kabul employee said this week, adding that he hoped that the Islamic Emirate will improve its relations with the neighboring countries. Many locals believe that the U.S. freeze on Afghanistan's assets was the direct cause of the country's difficulties in its economy, adding to its woes after 20 years of war. The economic crisis is among the biggest challenges facing the Taliban since they took control of the country in mid-August. Underlining the economic pressures, building on Afghanistan's new government are the rising prices for staples like flour, fuel and rice.
Earlier, Mary Ellen McCrorthy, World Food Programme Afghanistan Director, warned on Wednesday that the country's health system is failing and the economy is on the brink of collapse. She said donor pledges and commitments must urgently be turned into reality before it is too late. Tibetan Youth Congress, the largest pro-independence group on Thursday, celebrated its Golden Jubilee with 34 regional chapters that formed the Regional Working Committee in India's northern hill town of Dharamsala on Thursday. Exiled Tibetans at an event to mark the occasion paid respects to Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama and remembered those killed in the struggle against China. Exiled Tibetans living in India's northern Dharamshala on Thursday celebrated the 50th anniversary of TYC, the Tibetan Youth Congress, the largest pro-independence group with 34 regional chapters that form the Regional Working Committee. During the event to mark the occasion, exiled Tibetans paid respects to their spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. National anthem was sung and a minute silence was observed to remember the Tibetans killed in the struggle against China. Now we are observing the 50th, 50th Golden Jubilee of TYC and this is the message is for the last five decades TYC have been sustained, TYC have been raising the voice of innocent, voiceless Tibetan people and TYC is countering the Chinese oppressive policy. For until the Tibet issue is resolved, until the complete independence is restored, Tibetan Youth Congress will continuously struggle for the just cause of Tibet. Thousands of Tibetans, including the Dalai Lama, had fled into exile in India after a failed uprising against Chinese rule and since then have been living in various refugee colonies and settlements across India. Founded in 1970, the Tibetan Youth Congress advocates for independence in Tibet and now oversees 88 regional chapters across the world. Members from 34 regional chapters of TYC have gathered for the five-day meeting to be held from 7th to 12th of October. Hindus in Nepal performed rituals and prayers to mark the beginning of fortnightly festival of Dashin on Thursday. Coinciding with Navratri festival in India, Dashin commemorates the victory of good over evil. Hindus in Nepal on Thursday perform Ghat Stapana ritual which involves placing of a pot filled with holy water and barley seeds at sacred places in homes and temples, marking the beginning of fortnightly festival of the Shin. The germination ceremony of Sitling known as Jamara was also held at famous Dashain Ghar in capital Kathmandu, a room where special prayers are performed by priests on the occasion. Dashain commemorates victory of Hindu gods over wicked demons and is celebrated with great rejoice majorly involving worship of Hindu goddess Durga for nine days. Well, you should have said, I'm the Dio Kalash Ganesh, it's Tapana Garera, Yevar Opana, John Ropera, Shuba Shatma, John Ropera, Nakali, Malachi, Masara Shati, Pavatiko, and the Aradana Gordachu. Ramro, you Anuman Doka, Darbar Dashigar, Param Pragat, the Hine Choliakocha. As part of age old tradition, Nepalese army personnel also played cultural music and shot gunfire in the air to mark the beginning of the biggest festival in the country. The Shane, which coincides with Navratri in India, is also a time of family reunion where Nepalese people receive blessings from elders, wear new clothes, and eat mouth watering delicacies. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. External forces will not be allowed to violate our territory, assures Indian Air Force Chief on 89th Foundation Day. Pakistan is continued to suffer due to rising inflation amid pandemic. And Kabul residents hope for improvement in international relations and lower prices of goods. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.